He's not only the other guard on the Bulls, he's the other Harper in this series. The Bulls' Ron Harper, who ironically was compared by some to Michael Jordan when he came out of Miami of Ohio. Ron Harper was a very fine scorer his first eight years in the league. He averaged over 19 a game with the Cavs and the Clippers. Then he became a Bull last year. Michael Jordan returned and Harper's role changed. The numbers are no longer gaudy, but now Ron Harper is playing meaningful games in May. Peter Bessie spoke with him. The last year made me a, a very strong man. From North Carolina, number 45, Michael Jordan. You know, he comes back, MJ, me, me, MJ. If I was a coach, I'd pick MJ too. And so, it was his show. After signing a $19 million deal with the Bulls last season, Ron Harper became the best paid 12th man in basketball. One year later, the man they once called the next Michael Jordan starts next to his airness. Everybody wants to score points. I love to score points. I came into this league, I could score points. I wouldn't mind scoring points again. But in order to fit on a championship team, a team that has a chance, everybody must know what their basketball role is, I think. And I know on this basketball team what, what they asked me to do. Challenged by a speech impediment, Ron Harper has had to overcome many frustrations on and off the court, but none more powerful than those he faced in the schoolyard. They will laugh at me every day, say things to me, everything. I think you that's the school? hard part in all ages, that, that there was a the hard part. Even, even later in high school and... Doing then, they would say stuff. You know, Ron, what would they say? Ron Harper, he can't talk, he can't speak, he can't do this and that. I read somewhere where you said you were so inhibited that the only two words that you would say when you were young is hello and goodbye <laughs> to these kids. Well, yeah, be be because once you are a kid and everybody laugh at you, it's a thing. It's a thing that you just. Don't say anything. It's a thing where you just go and you, sh if you're there, you say hi and you just leave. Did you totally withdraw? Did you well, want to no, lash no. out at them? I said, well, if they laugh at me now, after we get some age and we step on that, you know, anything I can do good, I will just eat the kids up then. So you take it I out of the court? I was... played all sports. I was good in all sports. And so I was like, that's fine with me. There were plenty of obstacles in the NBA. Run out of Cleveland after being accused of running with the wrong crowd, Harper was exiled to the Clippers. Free agency couldn't come soon enough for him. It was a team that didn't have a chance. It was like, it was just long, 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 long seasons. And you said at, at that time, or actually at the end of your Clipper career, you know what I'm I getting at. I was in jail. At, right, that you were in jail. And, and here you are, Ron, making $4 million a year. How much sympathy did can't you buy want happiness. us you, to have? You can't buy happiness. You can't buy happiness. I don't care how much money I make. I was playing with guys who didn't love the game, who didn't come to compete every day on the basketball court. This is a team sport. I had guys who just cared about I, myself. That wasn't no fun to me. Would you have given up money to go? Oh, I, would I? I told them, if y'all could do a deal underneath any cat, I would take a pay cut and get out of here. Well, no doubt. Ron, last year, 12th man at times, your first year with the Bulls. This year, vital contributor. How, how good do you have it right now? Now, now it's like you playing it up. On the board, it's a win every night. It's a win. Well, Doc, Ron Harper has been in the league now for 10 years. He was arriving just as you were departing. Hey, Bob, I'll tell you, you guys don't notice, but he might have been the guy who pushed me out of the league. His rookie year, he came into Philadelphia one time, did a pirouette when I tried to steal the ball from him and laid it high off the glass. Quite embarrassing. And then about three plays later, he goes down the lane. I tried to elevate the block the shot. He goes up a little bit higher, dunks it on me. 
made the doc think that maybe it was time to move on and let the young guys take over. <laughs> no respect. I thought it was something I wrote, Doc. Well, it, it could have been that as well. But, but then he'd have to get in line. Speaking of which, it's interesting you should do this interview with Harper because the last few years you were really tough on him. That's because, Bob, his attitude was definitely questionable at the end of his Clipper career. He would be late for practices. He would take off games with bogus injuries. And then when he joined the Bulls that first year, he did not work out coming into that season. So so for all intents and purposes, he was not healthy, not in physical condition for the first year. But I applaud him. He's definitely got a grip on reality. He's turned his life and his game around. And it always helps when you're with the best team in the world. <laughs> the influences there are a whole lot better. Coming up, those Bulls look to remain perfect in the postseason as they meet the Knicks in Game 3. Marv Albert and Matt Gukas have the call from the Garden. Then Game 3 of the San Antonio-Utah Series, Greg Gumbel and Bill Walton will be on hand from the Delta Center. The NBA playoffs continue on NBC after these messages from your local station.